this is the solution to written homework 43. Okay, so then in part A, in part A we want to find the x-intercepts, so x-intercepts, this is when y is equal to 0. So we want to know when this function outputs 0. So f of x is equal to 0. So then negative 2 absolute x minus 5 uh, plus 2 is equal to 0. So if I move the 2 to the other side, that would be negative 2 absolute x minus 5 is negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. Absolute x minus 5 is 1. So that means that whatever we're putting inside of that absolute value, we need it, we need it to have value 1. If we were to put a 1 inside of that absolute value, it would be true. If we were to put a negative 1 inside of the absolute value, it would be, it would be true. So x minus 5 is negative 1, or x minus 5 is 1. So then taking this equation, subtracting, oh no, adding 5 to both sides, that would be x is 4, or x is 6. So that means that the x-intercepts are 4, 0, and 6, 0. So the y-intercepts, the algebraic condition for this is that this is when x is 0. So what we want to know is we want to know what is the output when the input is 0. So f evaluate at 0. That would be negative uh, 2 multiplied by absolute value of negative 5 plus 2. Well, absolute value of negative 5 is 5 times 2 is negative 10. So, uh, so negative 2 times 5 plus 2. So that'd be negative 10 and then plus 2, so that'd be negative 8. <coughs> and therefore, the y-intercepts are, or is, the y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 8. Okay, so now plot this function. Okay, so this can be uh, achieved in a variety of ways. So probably the easiest is just to plug in a bunch of values. <clears throat> so when x is 0, when x is 0, that would be half. So 0 plus half is half, and the absolute value of half is half, times negative 3 is negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves minus uh, 1 half is negative 4 halves, which is to say negative 2. So when x is 0, we're at negative 2. Okay, when x is 1, that would be 1 plus a half. So that'd be 3 halves. Absolute value of that is 3 halves. Multiply by negative 3, that's negative 9 halves. And then minus half, that'd be negative 10 halves, so negative 5. Okay, so that would be here. And carefully plugging, <coughs> plugging in more values that one and then another one that's even lower. So now one other convenient point to plug in is negative half because if x is negative half then we'll add half and that'll be zero. 
So at x is negative half, this would be 0, and that would be negative half. So negative half, uh, negative half is a point. So that one. So if, if we plug in negative 1, uh, so negative 1 plus half, that'd be negative half. Absolute value of negative half is positive half times negative 3 is negative 3 halves. Minus 1 half is negative 4 halves, so that would be negative 2. And now, <coughs> these points will be symmetric. So you can see that by, consi by considering function transformations. So this is a transformation of the absolute value function. This is this part doing x plus half. That means it's going to move left half. This is saying it's going to move down half. And this multiply by negative 3 means it's going to be flipped upside down and stretched. So we took the normal absolute value function, moved it left half, down half, and then flipped it over. And so that's what the result looks like.